Hey folks, welcome back to the city. In today's video, this street is really coming along now, so I'm going to have a bit of a dive into this and the new modular. Last week, I'd added the new Pandora jewellery store, which was a new mock based on the donut shop from the modular police station. And I had a wee six stud wide gap next to it to fill in, and I always had the idea of doing a staircase there, which would join onto a bridge behind and then further into the back of the city. So that's exactly what I did. And I used Duplo in the base instead of bricks, so I quickly had the height as it's quite brick intensive, and I built a staircase on top of that out of bricks and plates, which is tiled with sand blue. But really, of course, what I wanted to show off in this video is the building above, which is one of the most ornate I've done yet. And from above, it really stands out in this row of rooftops with its very narrow sand green tiled roof. Side by side, they couldn't be more different in style really, but I think they complement each other very well. And they're quite different in colour, which really makes it contrast and stand out. This narrow building is meant to be an apartment, and you might notice there's no door on either side. <laughs> so how do you get in? Well, I imagine there's a shared entrance in the building next door or something. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. <laughs> For the colour scheme, I stuck to just white, gold and light tan, and then that nugget colour or medium tan as I like to call it. And I used a lot of the one by one tan plates and studs to give the edges this nice layered look. The staircase area is meant to be open at the side, that's why I put the gold fence pieces. But as we go up you can see it's all open here above, this is to save on bricks, all these buildings are like this. And it is still strong and stable though. But it saves so many parts and you'll never see it once these buildings are put together. The rooftop uses a bunch of those sand green curved tiles and one of my favourite features is the gable ends, done with car wheel arches. And I like adding lots of other wee details with other parts as well. The rooftop itself sits on hinges on plates, it's quite simple, but it looks good I think. And it's the same on both ends. I needed to fill in one side of the wall though, so I used some old friends pieces here. And on the other side it looks like this. And although you can barely see the rooftop, this does need to be filled in. It would look terrible if it was just open. Around the back, it's slightly different to the front. I haven't based this on anything. It is an original design of mine. I put sand green bricks behind the fences so you can't see the empty interior as much. The key thing though was to create a way of connecting the staircase so I've got this arch section here which eventually I'll have a pathway all across the city from here. A closer look at the stairs and I really love the staircase, it's a really nice feature. Let's take the top off, it's on jumper plates on one side so I can get into this area and transport it easily by taking this off. It's actually quite nice to see the side of the jewellery store wall with the white and the pink and purple and grey. <laughs> so I've added the Joker here. <laughs> this is of course a reference to the 2019 Joker movie when he dances down the stairs. I thought I have to include a figure walking here so why not him? Especially as the stairs are quite steep and dark so you won't really see him. <laughs> Next, a wee task I've kind of put off, but I need to do it. These plates keep bending or bowing. It's just the nature of the clutch pressure on the grey base plate as they're so thin. But I have this problem anywhere that I've done my custom road, so I kind of have to find a solution. Luckily, Dad's got a countersink attachment for the drill. So I've drilled my hole with a regular drill. And now let's give a few rotations of the countersink and see if it works. I'll try these screws out now. And yes, the countersink works and I'm able to put the plates on top. It's actually flush. The problem on this bit though is there's no wood underneath here so it just sort of flops about but I'll fix that. Anyways, I moved on to this bit at the front. It's such a difference, it's totally flat. The cars glide over it perfectly now. 
so I'm going to do all this remaining section. I did have a lot of misgivings really about drilling into Lego, but it's a necessity really as it looks terrible and these base plates are always going to be here. Even when I go to brick conventions, they'll be used. And of course, they're screws so they can be screwed in and out easy enough. But whilst I'm doing this, I'm going to also do my pavement or sidewalk drains. A simple grill on a plate covered with a 1x4 tile. And I've spaced these out on my road so I have three of those 1x4 masonry bricks making up the side of the road and every third brick I put one uh, drain. And I've also put a clear tile on a few instead to represent water which is a nice touch. And once I drill this last bit in, this section of road and pavement will pretty much be done. So the next thing to do in the city is to focus on completing this street. It's going to be all original Dutch style narrow tall modulars, so still quite a few to do. On the left I'm working on a laundry which is using the soap suds build from the brick bank and I'm going to build a custom donut shop next to it using the tiny donut section from the police station modular. So I'm quite excited about getting that done. And then on the right side of this building, between this and the Sanctum Sanctorum, I'm going to do a 16 stud wide bakery, which will also be a cafe. But on top, I will make it two 8 stud wide buildings, which will look quite different to each other. So still having those tall, narrow buildings, but the building underneath will be one larger kind of cafe. I've not figured out how much I've spent on all this, so I'm going to sit down this week and update my spreadsheet and count the bricks as well. But it's not a huge increase, I'm roughly sitting at about £2,500 spent on LEGO so far. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video which will be the laundry and donut shop. Bye!